All right, if you're just joining us here on CBS Sports HQ, Tom Brady's extending his time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl winning champion. Originally signed that two-year contract last year, then had agreed to a one-year extension. You're going to see a lot on social media about a, a four-year thing. There's some voidable deals with that. Uh, but the big thing for Tom Brady is that he's contractually signed on through the 2022 season. So here's a look at him entering his 22nd NFL season. He's going to turn 44 years old this summer, and he can become the oldest quarterback to win a game this season, surpassing Vinny Testaverde in years and days if he's able to hit that mark this season. All right, let's bring in former executive of the year, Scott Pioli, here to talk about Tom Brady and this extension. Scott, what do you think about the news that has transpired so far on this Friday? Tommy, I'm not surprised by the news at all. My, my instincts and my conversations with him, uh, you know, told me that he wanted to come back. He was going to come back. So the fact that he is back is not surprising. The fact that he's got a new contract, which likely lowers his cap number to help the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, doesn't surprise me at all. So there's not a whole lot that I'm surprised. But again, I think this is good for, you know, everyone's going to talk about how good it is for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But to me, this is truly good for the National Football League because Brady is definitely one of the, one of those, one of the people in the league that really helps the National Football League for so many reasons. Love him or hate him. And you know Tom, well, obviously, for his time in New England. What is it about Tom Brady? It just seems like, in general, Scott, his contract negotiations end up working in a way that, that favors both sides, and especially the team. And it seems like this instance, as you pointed out, seems more of the same here. Yeah, Tommy, because his deal is he's about winning and winning championships. Does he like to get paid like everyone else? Sure he does, but he doesn't ever worry about being a pig. To him, winning championships is just as important as getting paid. He knows it already. You know, I go back to when we negoti renegotiated his contract. It was his first big contract after his rookie contract. And when we had that negotiation, he stepped in between Don Yee and myself and talked about, hey, when is enough enough? $10 million a year should be more than enough for me to take care of my family generationally. And he got the deal done with the caveat. He told Bill and myself, he said, listen, guys, I will take less as long as you promise to take that extra money and continue to build a good team around me, to continue to bring in good players that are good dudes. And we did that. And that was something that he did consistently over time in order to make sure that he not only was was a terrific player and got paid but he was never a pig when he came to the table because what he wanted to do was win championships and share those things not only with his teammates not only with the front office not only the coaches but with his family so to me what he's going to do here right now is no again it just goes to show that he is the same guy that he was when he got into the league he cares about winning championships above all it's one thing scott to build a world championship roster and then it's another challenge to try to repeat and sustain that success what is jason light going through right now as he does this deal pockets that away we had the franchise tag and all that other stuff happen as well what from a front office perspective what's going on in that tampa bay uh front office executive room right now the same thing that's going on around the league, Tommy, is they know what it took to win this year, but they also know that last year has absolutely nothing to do with this year. Part of what they had happened to allow them to win a championship is the same thing that every other championship team has, which is good fortune in terms of the key players staying healthy. So what they need to do is understand that there's going to be some attrition this year because that's what championship teams have to deal with more than anything. The top two things are their own team attrition because everyone on that team looks bigger, better, brighter, sexier, so they're going to have opportunities to get paid and go elsewhere. The other thing they have to deal with is not smelling themselves too much and knowing that they're going to be a target. So Jason's going through what every other championship team is. So Jason and Bruce Arians, what they've got to do is make sure that they they have the message throughout the team, listen, last year has nothing to do with this year. This is going to be a completely new football team. Even though some of the players will be the same, their performance won't be the same. So they will f have to find ways to, again, to fill in the holes that they're going to have this year. But this is part of what makes the NFL great, is when there is success, players get paid, they go elsewhere, and then you have to fill in with new players. So the pressure is going to be on Jason a little bit this year, but the good news is he's at least got one championship in his pocket. 
Scott, I got one more before I let you go, and it's sort of the, the term of these voidable years. We take a look at contracts now about what's real and what's not. I call it, you know, salary cap gymnastics. Our colleague Jonathan Jones calls it magic, however you want to describe it. What are the chances we start seeing something similar like the Tom Brady deal here with other contracts around the league? It happens all over the league, and it's happened for years. Uh, uh, my term for it is simply credit card borrowing because the, the cap allows this cap accounting and there's cash accounting. And what they're doing right now is they're paying cash but pushing the payment of that cash out into the future. Like any credit card, you know, you can play all the games that you want in terms of lowering cap numbers, but what you're doing is you're pushing a larger amount of money that is eventually either going to be dead money against your cap or it's going to be an acceleration hit. At some point in time, you have to pay the cap hit as well. So this has been something that's been going on since the beginning of free agency. And we had our first year of free agency in 94. A lot of pl teams played games with the cap where they said, wow, if I spend more cash, I can save on the cap now. And what happened was every single year, Tommy, the cap has gone up so significantly that it's allowed the credit cards to be paid off much easier. What's happening this year, because there's a drop in the cap, there's a reckoning of sorts coming to the people who have all done the credit card borrowing. And with this case, in this situation, it's credit card borrowing that's going to come due at some point in time. I love it. Pace up now, but more is coming down the road. Appreciate it. Scott Pioli breaking it down here with the Tom Brady deal with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Scott, certainly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, much more on Tom Brady and the extension there with the Tampa Bay Bucks. The fantasy perspective from Jamie Eisenberg, who was at Raymond James to watch that Super Bowl victory. His thoughts on Tom Brady stay at that. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.